Sports on Air. We literally had everything thrown at us. I give a lot of credit to the Talking Jets team and their coaching staff because the coaching staff on former alcohol as well as our players really had to work hard to get back to the finals again. So I give them a lot of credit. At the same time, I want to thank my players because when you were down two games to one and you had to win both games to make it back to the finals and everybody focused in and stayed positive and everybody was very attentive to the game plan and how we needed to execute for us to, to make it back to the, the championship round again. And just like it has been the entire conference, our defense is what held up for us. Talking Texas is a high-powered team, a high-scoring team, but defensively we were able to slow them down and, and to beat them tonight. We all feel like we have some unfinished business. We've already had two rounds with the Denver. We've lost both. We're looking forward to the third round. We want to change things around and come out the, vict the victors this time. So that's going to be our focus now. Luckily for us, after this hard grind against Talking Texas, we do have a few days off because of the break. But our focus now will be on Denver and how we can beat them this, this third time around. Well, I think the one thing you, you saw in this series is even though Talking Texas is a high power team, they put their minds to it. They also put away defense. They can shut you down. And we were having a hard time scoring. Most of their defense was all centered around Alan Durham. And he wasn't really able to move in the first half, even though he did have 15 points. I don't think he had very many field goals to go over 15 points. They were mostly coming from the foul line. And what we did in the second half was just to try to open up the floor a little bit. To be quite honest with you, I was trying to save the second half so that they wouldn't adjust to it in the first half or at halftime. But we moved everything to the middle of the floor. We tapped them on pick and rolls in the middle. We moved guys to the corner whenever Alan Gore had posted up to create more space behind him so we could get to the basket. So we just did things in space, like in the first half where everything was crowded. Yeah, not just tonight, I mean the entire conference. Um, I always say that Chris Newsom is our best all-around player. Uh, defensively, he is our best player. He also is our leading assist guy for local, the locals. He's also scoring the basketball for us. And that's just about everything we need on the basketball court. And some of those things don't really come up in the stat sheets, but he contributes a lot to the team. Long Kinto has been a revelation. Like I said before, I was literally shocked when we picked him in the second round. I couldn't believe he was still sitting there. Uh, it might be one of the biggest steals ever in, in the history of the PBA draft. And he's just one of those guys that does everything. I've learned over the years that you can get players who are versatile and do more than one thing and can play more than one position. They probably can help you win games. And Paul Kento's a good defender, he's a good shooter, he's a good assist guy, and he's really contributed a lot to the team. And if, you, if, and if you have an all rookie team, which I'm not sure if you have, I think you should be on it. Yeah, I Uh, won't be tonight, I can promise you that. Because, uh, I have not had much sleep in the last week and a half. As you know, coaches worry a lot, stress a lot about the games, and we also stay up very late watching tape, trying to figure out how we're going to uh, come up with our strategies for the next game. So, definitely not tonight, but by tomorrow I'll be back to work. No question. Yeah, Christmas is there. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is Christmas. It doesn't seem like it right now, but Christmas is two days from now. So we'll take a couple days off for the players, and I'm, I'm going to say I'll get back to work. I mean, me, me personally, I'll start scouting this and never to be Coach, on, yes. the at the top of your head, uh, you have Bong Pinto right now, Almasan, Alain Malexi, 
compared to your previous two finals meetings with Ginebra. Yeah. And they only added Pringle. Do you think you have a better chance this time around? Our goal is to win the championship. We have a lot of respect for Ginebra and Tim Cohen. You know, Tim is the top coach in the league. Um, but our goal is to win. Simple as that. At this point, it doesn't matter who we're playing against. Our goal is to win the championship. We've already lost two. So we only have one goal. Did I answer your question? I'm not sure if it did. But obviously, Amazon, Malik C, Kento have added to our depth uh, compared to when we faced it never in the past. So they've made us a better team. Even though I still feel Elaine is still adjusting a little bit to the team. And this, this particular series was a tough matchup for Amazon because the, the big was Rosario. He's more of a stretch for him. So Amazon had a tough time offensively and defensively because he had to stay on the airport the whole time. Guarding with Rosario, he stretched out to the three point line the entire game. I'm hoping that against him, never the matchup will be a lot better because of Greg and, um, and, and Joppin, where Amazon will be able to stay in the paint a lot more there in this series. So I think all three guys can help us. You mentioned uh, who might be perhaps might be under review for the final series against Miracle. Oh, they're always hungry. Tim's always hungry. That's why he has so many championships. Uh, but yeah, we want to win. Quite honestly, with you, it never is a team we're playing. It didn't matter which team we're playing. We've already lost two. So there will be a lot of hunger to get this championship. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified with our latest videos.